the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Right, right, right. Hey, that's that's how right. Minister Hopper. <laughs> and, and Elder, Minister Hopper's on the phone, on the on the line. Okay, you pulling him in? He just he just signed in. Excellent. I don't know if he can hear me yet. He's he's uh he's trying to come up. He wants to discuss uh he's interested in our topic we've been talking about with the hearing the voice of God. Excellent, excellent. And, and, uh, Huh? Because as his agents in the earth, we, we've been pretty much given the mandate to, he said, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yes, so sir. He moves on in the spirit realm like he did on Jesus. I mean, he was moving. Right. Jesus was observing what he did. He had that kind of connection with him. He could hear what he was speaking. And he just mimicked it in the earth. He, 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 he is the manifest image of the invisible God. And so and he, we have now been given that task. Yeah. And, and we don't, are, we, don't forget, Elder, he didn't, this ain't the first time, you know, as many times, right? And he used prophets as yes. well to, yes. to speak, right? Yes, and, and he still and, does. Yeah, and don't forget, he, he, used, he also used the example of Moses and Aaron. Yes. To, to, to go so, tell my people, right? Yes. Yes. But you know what's really funny is that that word is near, not the, even in their mouth. In their mouth, yes, sir. <laughs> Even in your mouth, I mean, and it's like the Holy Ghost that was a far off from us initially has come to take residence within us. Know you not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have received from God. Come out. So the same spirit that was in the fullness of the spirit was in Jesus bodily. Uh, the fullness of the Godhead was in Jesus bodily, but of that spirit that raised him from the dead, that spirit dwells in us. In us. And that spirit dwelling in us has a. Has a uh, 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 a dynamic it has an impact that we are yet to really fully realize because we oftentimes speak counter to it I mean I say I'm sick well there may be sickness coming upon me but I'm not sick it's almost like I won't take on the attribute if you listen to the new the, 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 uh, the, the, the commercials now they always the commercials always encourage you to claim your high blood pressure, your cancer, your diabetes, your, it belongs to you. They, they ask you to take onus right. and embrace the thing. And if you embrace it mentally, and if you embrace it with your words, if you embrace it with your words, you will eventually talk yourself into it whether you got it or not. So that, 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 when I was saying that the, the dynamic of my conversation, of my words, I didn't really realize that until some, I guess in the midst of this Bible study that we're doing, uh -huh. I remember the scripture where it says you should be called in account for every idle word that you speak. Exactly. But I didn't know how, how significant an issue that was. Exactly. You know, every time we open our mouth, every time we open, our, every time we speak something, it, it is going to have an impact. It is hard to really think like the little, little fluff, you know, things we say, a little sarcastic or you know, comical stuff that we mouth that is having an impact on something. But yeah. it is. I, I, I was I just left my mom's house, you know, and I've been dealing with swelling in the legs and all that stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. My mom looked over to me and said, Your leg is really swollen. I said, Mom, not nearly as bad as you think that they, as, as they have been. They've come down quite a bit. But I was kind of disturbed by what she observed, you know. So I went into a room alone to pray with my legs. Right. I lay hands on my own legs and I pray for my legs and now my legs just started to go down already. So, so I mean so, visibly, visibly they have strength. Right. I mean, <laughs> from the time that and that's been from the time I thought you know, initially when I called in up until now, I was just leaving my mom's house. So I had just finished praying for my legs. Amen. And it's obvious, it is obvious now that they're not the size they were when I was at the house. Even the pressure that was on them is going down. So I'm beginning to see how, how powerful the impact has, has. The impact has on us in our situation, our words have. 
it, it, it's just a matter of coming to acceptance of what Jesus is spoken. Exactly. You know. So, we, we, I'm sorry. Uh, the only thing I said we make Minister Hopton was interested in hearing the voice of God. Yes. And what I wanted to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's let's kind of stay on task on that how how God's speaking to us, right? Yes. Yes. And 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 and, and back again is if we uh Ms. Hopper, we we actually use a uh we're doing a CTI dealing with the central what is the central idea of the text? Yes, the, and the with, with the focus of taking a scripture and seeing how God talks to you about when you're reading scripture, really revealing his word, his voice to you as you reading the word of God. Right? right. So, right. so what we what we did I, and, and what, what Ellen and I have just been talking about, but to bring you on track of it, we're interested in seeing how you how how you pick this up. What we did is we went to Mark chapter four. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that up. And we were focusing on how to see what God says about the uh, central idea of the text and what God is saying out of the uh, those that parable. And and we were struggling with it because he wanted to say make a 15 to 18 word uh synopsis synopsis of that parable and we uh that was a struggle by itself but my point is i want to i was talking to elder about what how, what god led me with reading that scripture I couldn't do, I, we tried to do the central context, central idea of the text of 15, 18 words, but we did agree uh, Sunday that it really, he just was trying to keep it at that at 15, 18 words because he said, I want to hear what God is revealing to you when you're reading this parable, this, this, this text. Well, this is where it's at. It's talking about Mark 4. And, and it'd be interesting to see if you get what, what you get out of what God is saying. Or I'm going to hear it. I'm going to let you know what I felt I was led to. All right? All now, right. So here's the parable. The parable said, uh, verse 3, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower. It came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. Mm -hmm. and, but, but when the sun was up, it was scorched to decay, and because it had no root, it withered away. And then he says, some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and yielded no fruit. And all and the other fell on good ground and did deal fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some a hundred. And then verse 9, he said, He did now because that's why we try to talk about hearing the voice of God, right? Mm -hmm. He said right here, he said, He that has an ear, <laughs> he that has an ear to hear, let him hear, right? Right. right so so right. so and, and it's interesting when you when you went to uh uh, 10 through 20, he's explaining the mystery of the kingdom, right? Right. So the question was, even the disciples had asked, so, that, so therefore we're not in bad, bad company now, right? But the question is, when we're doing our study, is what are we, what, what is God saying to you, even though you may be tainted, tainted a little bit because you know the explanation, from 10 to 20. In 15 to 18 words, what did God tell you about that that scripture? Hey, Elder. Why, why I'm fooling with that? The question is, what is God? So he told you, he that has an ear, let him hear, right? So, mm -hmm. so Elder that I was talking about, what I was, I got out of it, right? 
And I, I, I'll give you time. You can, you can look at it and listen. You can just meditate on it. Just chew on it. Okay? Because I want to throw something up at this is This is my part. I was telling Elder what before you came in that, and this is way out there now, but it's it's, it's not it's not out there from the biblical scriptures, but it's is I think you remember Elder uh Bishop said you got all that from the uh from reading that parable. <laughs> yeah. The the point was when you first came in, I said this parable to me. And, 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 and you can catch it if you want, catch me and, and say, no, brother, I can't get it from there. But the point is, it's a restating statement of the garden back in Genesis, as well as the, the importance of the spiritual warfare that we have to face today. And, and this, is, this is what we got out. Because you know that in the explanation, he said, uh, look at this in verse... Uh, we, we all agree Sunday that this parable, just like most of the other parables, where it said the kingdom of heaven is like. You remember? A lot of them said the kingdom of heaven is like, right? And and we know that when, when Jesus started preaching, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? He was repent. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, so most of us agree that Jesus preached about the kingdom. And even though this parable didn't start off like some of the other parables, which was the kingdom of heaven is like, or the kingdom of God is like, we know that when he explained it in uh, verse 11 there, you see what he said in verse 11? He said unto, him, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom, right? <laughs> So we so we already can sit there and say that this parable is is dealing with the mystery of the kingdom, right? All right. Now right. I didn't get a chance to explain as much Sunday, but I'll, I'll break it down with the Elder. If you go back to, I told Bishop, I said this is telling me that really the restatement like a little synopsis of the of the beginning, because if you look at Genesis chapter one. You, you, if you notice in this verse 26, I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to say it because it's, 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 it, to me, it's just sitting, it's sitting right at it. If you look at 26, and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Over the fish of the air, over the, oh, he said, over the fish in the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Right? Now, now right. check this out. <laughs> what is a dominion? A dominion, we even broke it down. We took it down to the, uh, uh, how would you say here? I put it in the concordance. And if you go to the concordance, this is what dominion means. Can you, you can see it, right? It, it's, it says a primitive root to strand down, that is subjugate specifically to crumble off, come to make it, have dominion, prevail against, reign. You only can reign if you talk about a kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Bear, make to rule. <laughs> Normally rule is, is dealing with kingship. Uh, and take, or take over, right? So, so God gave man dominion. He gave them a kingdom to rule over from the beginning. Yes. And and the reason I was saying this is is re saying the story in that parable was that he also said in Genesis 26 to 27 and uh and 28 he says he said first off 
So God created man his own image. Image of God created him. He can't create him. Male and female created them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be what? Be fruitful and multiply. Fruitful and multiply. Right. And, and, and you know, in that parable, I'm just saying the thing that was pulling me. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that what God was saying to you, but I'm just saying how he. He, he led me back and said, look, I'm just restating the story for you. I told them to be fruitful and multiply. I told them to, to bear, what, 30 fold, six in a hundred. I, I told them. That was their mission from the beginning, Elder. Wasn't it? To, to bear, to be fruitful. Right. And, and then the other piece was, he said, subdue. Yeah, he said, subdue. Uh, uh, and, and then look at 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. The sower sow, right? If you go back to that parable again, what was it? A sower sows, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And what does a sower sow? See the word. <laughs> right. Yeah, hey, Mara. Hey. I, I was telling the Mara that the when we were going looking at that parable again, and and we got uh Minister Hopper here on on, on the line with us. Uh, okay. And and I was saying how even we we're talking about the CTI and all that, and uh -huh. and and I was and went and uh, just to bring you up to speed, just to remind you. Of the of the parable, you know, it said he that has an ear, let him hear, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the whole purpose of Bishop saying is, if we're talking about hearing the voice of God, this parable, if we study it from the from the aspect of it, it it, it we, you you really do have to beg the question of what did he say to you <laughs> in the spirit, even though we know we got the explanation ten to twenty. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, but, I, go ahead. I, I 